Hello everyone and welcome to another Smashing Pumpkins reaction. Yeah, yeah, I know I've been absent for a while, but I'm working on my first record and that consumes a lot of time. Don't worry, I'm back and this is the alternative rock month as every year since 2020. That means that throughout the whole month and every single week of it, you'll have a brand new reaction for an alternative rock record, either a classic or a new release, as we will see in the next couple of weeks, but let's save that for later. Today we have a classic. That's right, I'm still going on my Smashing Pumpkins journey and today is time for a door, a record that as I can see was released the very same year I was born and I always consider these kind of records very special for obvious reasons. So this is the part when I stop talking and start listening. So remember to stay up to the end for the review and I hope you enjoy it. All right, that's a very quiet one to begin with. I got it. Mm. That's beautiful. But I'm gonna turn up the volume a little. Oh my, those harmonies. I wasn't expecting to find such a tender song to open this record. And I mean, no complaints at all that this is a mellow tune to begin with. But it's kind of a weird tactic for smashing pumpkins. You know how this feels? It feels like we are picking it up as we left it in farewell and goodnight. And it's almost over. And well, what a song to begin this record. It it really threw me off. I mean you wouldn't expect this kind of stuff from the very same band that just a couple of years before released one of the most incredible rock records ever created. What the hell? Now we're into trip hop? Oh my god, I'm loving this one. That beat reminds me I still got to listen to Nine Inch Nails. Holy damn. I hadn't noticed that bass until the very end, but that was the thing driving the song. And right into the next one. I guess, because I'm not hearing anything. There it is. I'm getting such a 1979 part 2 vibes here. Lovers out of time. Man, Billy definitely has a thing for a break bit, doesn't he? Those the cure influences right there, it's just like heaven. But yeah, this record so far has this mixture of sampling and breakbeat with alternative rock and maybe that's what it is about. I don't know, but you can hear both so clearly. What a great transition. And now even shoegaze, but good ass shoegaze. I love how dynamic this song is, it never stops moving. No, no, that's Darcy. Holy damn, Darcy's still here! I thought she would... For some reason I thought she left the band after... after Melancholy... I don't know why. Oh my god, beautiful curse. 
those chords are so simple, it's probably just a C minor interval, but it works so well. The strings are doing it for me. I think they're not even strings, I think it's a synth, but it sounds so like it. I love how he sings falling, and it sounds like he's falling. Beautiful. <laughs> I was really feeling it, you know? Alright, back to the break beat. Let's see what awaits. something more explosive, but alright. Alright, these songs might not be as explosive as Melancholies or Siamese Dream or Gish, but they are heavy. They are really, really heavy, really dense and obscure. And it's not only Billy this time, but it sounds like the whole band had such burdens they translate into their music. Ooh. I'm loving this. It sounds so mystical. I feel like I'm in Silent Hill right now. Is that playing backwards? Oh, I think it was. And yeah, very, very heavy stuff so far. It sounds like a rap beat. Hey, I wasn't that mistaken. Yep, there's no room for doubt here. This is Smashing Pumpkins' Darkest Hour. This one specifically goes anywhere. And there it goes. Yeah, not my favorite by any means. I was literally waiting for it to end. I'm sorry Smashing Pumpkins fans, but we're still got more than half of the record to go. And I think that's what we should be doing right now. I'm adding it right now! Oh, yeah! Everything about this song is so right, except the title levels and around his. <laughs> oh, it sounds so ethereal, it sounds so mystic, so spiritual. I love this kind of stuff, man, these kind of songs. sample in it at least not this one but it's so mesmerizing and right into the next one oh it's called Park all right mm. great guitar work right there Oh, the bass, the bass is carrying this song, but 
that guitar as well is, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, everybody here is so freaking talented. Darcy's harmony is always a liver. I'd really like to know what machines they use to create this record. Oh my god, now this beat just sounds alien. Probably Billy himself is from outer space, so... It's fading out. Yeah, I also think the weirder the songs get, the more I like them. A hundred percent confirmed, Billy has a thing for electronica now. This looks like cowboys in my mind. I'm pretty sure up to this point in their career, all of them had problems of their own to solve, but they were still capable of delivering such peaceful music. But I gotta say, at some points, it feels more like a record of B-sides and rarities than the actual B-sides and rarities record I reacted to. enjoying it all in all not my favorite but not the one I like the least all right this sounds even quieter than before is he really singing about a dog person I hate to admit it but this is also one of those songs I'm just waiting for it to finish and moving on to the next one it's not that it's bad, but maybe it's just way too whimsical for my taste. Oh, and if you watched my melancholy reaction and wondered if after several listens I would appreciate We Only Come Out At Night and Beautiful, those songs I said I didn't like, I still don't like them, so probably I'm not gonna like this either in the long run. Alright. I do have a concern about this record and it's that it doesn't seem to follow a common thread neither in sound or thematic not like Siamese Dream for example uh, it's just like what I said about uh, B-Sides and Rarities records a mash of a lot of things together and it's a shame indeed because some of these songs absolutely kill I mean, it's also not one of my favorites, but it's a very peaceful song and I'm enjoying it. Oh my god, that bass is so heavy. And it's tuned like in drop D. Oh my god, it's not just a fade out, it's like they took away almost all of the bass and middle frequencies of the song. It's so weird, but all right. And into the next one. Okay, okay, this sounds like it's going to be a heavy one. In its own way. Behold, the nightmare. That right there was probably, now that I know it, one of my favorite bridges of any song of all time. Yeah, beautiful as well. I wasn't expecting what happened in the middle of the song, but it was such a nice surprise. And we're into the next one. 
Well, it seems like these last songs will be very quiet, very intimate. What a chord progression! It's bright, then dark, next note is bright again. It's more like a Radiohead progression right there. Mm, this will be an Odyssey. That energy and the way it's slowly building up reminds me of Porcelina. Isn't this the closing track? It's perfect for it. Oh, yes! This hits especially hard for me because my grandmother's name was Martha. I didn't get to know her, she died two years before I was born, but reading the lyrics, it's kind of this song was meant for her. I don't know, I, I don't want to listen to any other song after this. This is for me the closing track and you cannot tell me otherwise. But even still, it has like 1 minute 20 to go. Oh, there it is. Yeah, up to this point it kinda sounds like they are just uh, putting random sounds here and there to make this song longer. But if it doesn't need to be longer, why would you extend it? Well, it seems like a little coda. And now, there it goes. No, but seriously, I, I don't want to keep on going right now. Why would I do that? This song was perfect. And, oh my god, we still got more, two more to go, but... I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm very hesitant right now. I know I gotta finish the record. I just don't want to. I think this record is fine as it is as of now maybe those two extra songs would blew it i don't know i don't know but here we go it's a great chord progression but i still believe this shouldn't be here Piano, it kind of sounds like Tom York. It's fading out, but it doesn't seem like the song is ending. Now, the last one. Oh, <laughs> 17 seconds. What the hell was that? It was like a lullaby, no, like part of a lullaby to say goodbye and then it just got right there in the middle. But all right, I guess that's a door by Smashing Pumpkins, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, this record definitely hits different when you listen to it alone and with headphones, but I still believe it would have worked much better as a B-side compilation. You can't really blame Ator for it. I mean, whatever record coming after Melancholy has some big shoes to fill in, 
but I still believe Fator could have been more. Here we got some beautiful and tender moments like to Sheila, the opener, or some bangers like Ava Ador, but overall it feels like this record lacks the cohesion of previous works. Sorry SP fans, but the track listing right here objectively sucks. It's all over the place and it ends on a song that's basically nothing. It's 17 seconds of pure noise and it takes away the spot that should have belonged to songs like For Martha that really are beautiful and that gives you that sense of of closure. But if you rearrange that track listing, suddenly Ator feels very different. I leave my personal arrangement in the description in case you want to give it a try. I'm not trying to diminish the band's choices, but I'm pretty certain that track listing in the description manages the energy better. Coming back to the music, which is what really matters here, I find that door surprisingly soothing, like an epilogue, not for melancholy, but for the band itself. I was really pleased when I got that 1979 feeling in songs like Perfect, and those industrial influences were pretty unexpected, but a nice surprise for sure. What I said about the band carrying that burden on their shoulders is also pretty palpable here, but the more I listen to Ador, the more I think I wouldn't have it any other way. Between their personal and internal band issues, I'm pretty sure this is Smashing Pumpkins at their darkest, but it's also a much necessary step to the revolution. However, this is also the SP record I enjoyed the least, still being Pieces is Carried my favorite, and that's why I only added 7 songs to my library, so Ador is for me a 7 out of 16. I don't believe it's a bad record at all, but everything around it kind of feels like they felt short considering the discography so far. And not even to fill Melancholy's shoes, but just in general, it feels like Smashing Pumpkins can do much better. But anyway, that was my reaction slash review of A Door by Smashing Pumpkins. What do you think about this record? And should I keep on my SP journey? Don't forget to leave it in the comments. And if you like what you see, as always, don't forget to subscribe as well as checking out my other reactions. My name is Tony Morgendorfer and I'll see you in the next one.